Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you so much. It is wonderful to see you. Great to have you here with us today, especially if this is your very first time. I want to welcome you to the family of Ascension Lutheran Church. We're glad to have you and pray God's richest blessings our time of worship as we gather together here uh, to worship our Lord and Savior. And because of COVID, we've learned not to take worship for granted anymore, huh? Am I the only one that feels that way? What a great privilege, great blessing it is. It really is. It's great to see some of our members that are back for the first time as well. We haven't seen you for, what, four or five months. <laughs> so it's great to, great to see you. Great to have you here this morning. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And we come to, in our gospel reading today, a very, very critical text. You know, we oftentimes think of Simon Peter as being a person who always speaks before he thinks, right? Um, I've oftentimes joked Peter had foot and mouth disease. He was always sticking his foot in his mouth. But today we hear him give that grand confession of who Jesus Christ is. And Jesus quickly points out to him, Peter, this didn't come from you, but rather came from my Father in heaven. It was revealed to him. And it's the same thing for each one of us as well. God has opened our eyes to see Jesus as our most wonderful and most beloved Lord and Savior as well. And I'm gonna be preaching on the text here this morning, the gospel reading as well. And the title of my message is, Who is this man? Question mark. Who is this man? Very important question. Just real quick, um, on the very first Sunday of each month, we have prayer time at 5 p.m. We always try to give you the opportunity to write down any special prayers that you might have. And just to let you know, there are some prayer time sheets. They're in the back right by the offering plates as you go out the door. Uh, we don't take up the offering during the service. If you brought it, we thank you very much for that. That helps support our ministry. And you can either put them in the offering plates as you come in, or there's two plates here back by the exit door as well. And you can drop them there. But there's prayer time sheets there and pens. If you have any special prayers, take a moment to jot them down on the sheets. Just simply fold it over. You can leave it laying right on the table and I'll get them after service and make sure they get up here for prayer time on Sunday, September 6th. Speaking of Sunday, September 6th, um, and I'm, I'm saying this not so much for all of you, but rather for those who are tuning in on our service through our website. On starting September 6th, we're gonna offer Holy Communion to those who are not here in the service. So those of you who are in the service, we take communion on the first Sunday. We've been doing that throughout COVID, taking uh, communion on the first Sunday. And obviously those of you who are here will receive it. But to help out those who do not feel comfortable or because of underlying health issues are not able to be here on Sunday mornings, um, we're going to offer it after service, uh, after everyone has pretty much cleared the parking lot, we're going to have a drive-through communion. And they can just simply pull up. We'll be out there on the edge of the sidewalk by the parking lot to give them communion as well. So just uh, if you're not here with us this morning, those of you who are tuning in, be sure to make note of that if you'd like to receive Holy Communion through drive through communion, okay? That's all the announcements I have. We've got a wonderful service plan, great hymns to sing. Did you bring your singing voice with you here today? Okay, good, good. It's kind of hard with the masks on, isn't it? Let's go ahead and begin, shall we, with our opening sentences here this morning. Everything will hopefully be up on the screen for you, and you can follow along as we go. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bow down toward your holy temple. I will give thanks to your name because of your mercy and because of your truth. Yes, you may the word even greater than your name. Indeed, the Lord is exalted, but he sees the lowly. And he recognizes the proud from distance. Also, do not continue to conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Let us sing.
If you're able, I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness of our sins. The Lord, who is the rock of our salvation, invites his people to listen. Listen to me, you people who pursue righteousness, you people who seek the Lord. Lord God, we confess that we have not listened to you. We have instead listened to what our itching ears want to hear, and have shut our ears to the truth of your word. The Lord invites his people to look. Look confidently to the rock from which you were hewn, to Abraham and Sarah. Lord God, we confess that we have not always looked to you for our provision, hope, and guidance. We have looked for into other things of this world that have led us astray, through which our worship and prayers have faltered. The Lord invites his people to pay attention to me, my people, my nation, listen to me. Lord God, we confess that we have become distracted in our earthly pilgrimage. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may depart from our sinful ways and serve you with holiness of heart and mind. Amen. God is gracious and merciful, and here's our confession. By the command of our Lord, as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. throughout the world until the end of time as the Holy Spirit works in the lives of your people. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, dear friends. chapter 51. Listen to me, you people who pursue righteousness, you people who seek the Lord. Look confidently to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were cut. Look confidently to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who gave birth to you. Yes, when I called him, Abraham was only one person, but I blessed him and multiplied him. The Lord is certain to comfort Zion, he will comfort all her ruins. Certainly he will make her wilderness like Eden and her wasteland like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving in the sound of music. Pay attention to me, O my people, my nation, listen to me. For the law will go out from me, and I will establish my justice as a light to the peoples. My righteousness is near. My salvation goes forth, and my arms will bring justice to the peoples. The seacoast will wait for me. They will have confidence in my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. 
Look closely at the earth beneath, because the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants will die like bats. But my salvation will remain forever, and my righteousness will never be abolished. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans, the end of chapter 11, continuing to chapter 12. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how untraceable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his advisor? Or who has first given to God that he will be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your appropriate worship. Also, do not continue to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you test and approve what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. So by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but think in a way that results in sound judgment, as God distributed a measure of faith to each of you. For we have many members in one body, and not all the members have the same function. In the same way, though we are many, we are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. We have different gifts, according to the grace God has given us. If the gift is prophecy, do it in complete agreement with the faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraging, then encourage. If it is contributing, be generous. If it is leadership, be diligent. If it is showing mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. I am speak to God. And thank you so much, Diane, for reading our first two readings as well. Dear friends, out of love, honor, and respect for our Lord and Savior, I now invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, and we begin with the 13th verse. This again, as I mentioned, will serve as a basis for the message this morning. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but you, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. <laughs> May be seated, dear friends, for the end of the day.
dear friends in Christ, in the words of St. John <clears throat> from the book of Revelation, unto him who loved us and who has washed our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who is this man? Who is this man, Jesus? That's the watershed question, isn't it? It's the most essential question that has ever been asked by anyone in the history of mankind. And it's the watershed question that every one of us sitting here this morning must, that requires a response from us. So dear friends, how will you answer it? The question pops up in our gospel reading this morning from Matthew uh, chapter 16. And our text here begins this way. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? That's the decisive question. Jesus asks his disciples what the public opinion polls of his day are saying about him. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Dear friends, Jesus oftentimes referred to himself as the Son of Man. It was one of his favorite titles for himself. Now please understand that Jesus is not conceited or concerned about his fame. Rather, Jesus is carefully preparing his disciples for their very own defining moment. Well, the disciples had been with Jesus for some time now, and they had been among folks and had their ear down to the railroad track. And so they share various opinions with Christ things that they have heard. Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. All interesting opinions, huh? But all are way off the mark. Jesus is bold preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Reminded people of John the baptizer. It was the same message that John preached. Could Jesus be John raised back from the dead? Or what about one of the men of God from Israel's earlier history? Certainly Elijah was a fearless prophet, right? He was a, a miracle worker too. And he was also supposed to precede the Messiah. Could Jesus be Elijah making an end time visit. What about Jeremiah? He preached against the false worship in the temple of his time. And he suffered a lot of opposition for it. Kind of sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? So these are points of similarity between Jesus and the prophets of the past. But dear friends, all these speculations and opinions are lowballing who Jesus really is. One greater than a prophet is here. Indeed, Jesus is the one that all the prophets were all pointing ahead to. And that's the point. That's exactly the point. Proper opinions about Jesus, yes. But they all fall short of identifying who Jesus really is. They all miss the mark. No matter how, no matter how complimentary they may sound. And this sort of low-balling Jesus, by the way, still goes on in our own day, doesn't it? Two years ago, I bought a, a new book that was entitled, Will the Real Jesus Please Stand Up? It's a great book. And you can order it from Concordia Publishing House in case you're wondering. But in this book, the author identifies 12 false Christs that are popular in our own day. 
but all of whom miss the mark. For example, there's Jesus as the mascot. One option among many. The good teacher, the therapist, Jesus, the giver of bling. Jesus, the national patriot. Jesus, the social justice warrior. The moral example, the new Moses, the mystical friend, the feminized Jesus. And then the last one, Jesus, the teddy bear. The teddy bear. Dear friends, these are all different ways that people like to think of Jesus and who he is. But each falls short of who the real Jesus is. For instance, some people think of Jesus as a mascot, you know, with pom-poms who encourages his followers in their pursuit of whatever makes them happy. Or how about Jesus as the good teacher, not the incarnate divine Lord, and nothing more than a wise religious teacher. Or how about Jesus, the teddy bear, a cuddly, safe, and tame, crossless, and anti-intellectual savior with no blood, no wounds, and no suffering. Now, each of these false Christ is Jesus as we like to imagine him. But none of them is the real deal. So, will the real Jesus please stand up? And he does today in our text. To tell the truth, Jesus is much more and much better than any of these popular misconceptions. The real Jesus needs to be your answer to that question, who is this man? And so Jesus wants his disciples to, to both know and to confess who he really is. He asks them this question. And now he's going to bring it home and he's going to bring it really personal. That's why I say it's a watershed question for each one of us. Jesus says, but you, you, who do you say that I am? You can't answer for someone else. You can only answer for yourself. And Simon Peter, as the spokesman of the 12, speaks up with the correct answer. Peter finally got it right once. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes, that's who Jesus really is. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one, the promised savior from the very moment of our first parents, Adam and Eve falling into sin. God reaffirmed that promise long ago with King David. God said that one of his descendants would reign upon his throne forever and have an everlasting kingdom of righteousness and blessings. Jesus is that promised one. He is the Christ that everyone was looking forward to. And what's more, Christ Jesus is the very Son of God. Dear friends, that means He is God incarnate. He is God in the flesh. He is the Son of the living God. And Peter speaks the truth. And Jesus says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but who? My Father who is in heaven. You see, dear friends, no one can know the real Jesus unless God reveals this truth to him. Jesus once said in John chapter 6, verse 44, he said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me, what? Draws him, draws him. You and I did not suddenly wake up one morning and decide, hey, I think I'm going to vote for Jesus today. He is the divinely sent Savior who comes down from heaven for us men and for our salvation. No. Dear friends, you did not come up with that on your own. God's word worked that faith in your heart. 
Jesus opened up your heart and your mind in order to understand the Holy Scriptures. St. Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 2, and please take note, but the natural man, the sinful Adam, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. The good news is that in holy baptism, the Spirit of God called you by the gospel and enlightened you with his gifts so that now you do not believe, you do believe, excuse me, in Jesus Christ as your Lord. God's purpose is what John writes in the end of his gospel, that you may believe that Christ or Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and notice and that by believing what? You may have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Huh? Where would you and I be without him? Who is this man? Peter rightly answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And this confession of faith, dear friends, getting it right and confessing it boldly is foundational to the church that Jesus has established. As Jesus goes on to say in verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overpower it. Peter's name, we're told, is Simon, son of Jonah. But Jesus gives him his enduring nickname, Peter. Peter. Petros is the Greek equivalent of calling him Pebbles. Only his last name is a Flintstone. Jesus is making a pun here because he says that Peter's confession, not Peter himself, but Peter's confession will be the solid rock, the Petra. That's the word, the Greek word that's used here. The Petra, the solid rock on which Jesus will build his church. He is referring to the apostolic proclamation of the faith that Jesus is the Christ that he is the son of the living God and that this will be the rock solid foundation of the church for all time and so it is it's what we confess every Sunday in the Apostles Creed or the Nicene Creed and confess it once a year in the Athanasian Creed the church is the household of God Notice what, what, what Paul writes in Ephesians 2, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself, what? As the cornerstone. As the cornerstone. And on this rock, Jesus says, I will build my church. Dear friends, please notice that it's Jesus' church. And he's the one who's going to build it his way. You know, oftentimes people in the church want to build it their way rather than God's way. They think the way to build the church is to create a, an exclusive country club or maybe just to offer people some popular how-to messages delivered by some hipster celebrity pastor. You know, Jesus is life coach. No cross, no sin, no sacramental talk, no repentance. Just pure entertainment and lots and lots of PR and programs. That'll draw them in. And you know what? They may succeed in terms of numbers, but not necessarily in terms of faithful, faithfully building God's church. You see, dear friends, if we are not preaching the real Jesus, Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, and risen from the dead, then we are missing the boat. This is Jesus' church, and he will build it his way regardless of popularity or numbers. And what does he say? The gates of hell will not overpower 
Today, no one, I believe, questions that hell is breaking loose on the church. I've heard it from so many of you. I heard it even prior to COVID and all the riots and demonstrations and everything else that's going on in, in society. Christians are being martyred, by the way, in great numbers in, in Nigeria and Sudan and the Middle East and a host of other places around the world. Christians are being ostracized and oppressed in Europe and Canada and even here in the United States. There's no question the church is under severe attack. Muslim jihadists and secular extremists are attacking from without. False teachers are undermining the faith from within. But Jesus, here's the good news. But Jesus is watching over his church. He is guarding his flock and he is purifying our faith even in the fire of affliction. As Martin Luther once put it in his magnificent hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, he says, they may take our life, goods, fame, child, and wife, but they cannot take our salvation away from us. Jesus, our champion, has conquered death and the devil and the hordes of hell by his victorious death and resurrection. I hold the keys of death and Hades, the risen Christ declares, having defeated his enemies. The church militant will become the church triumphant because Christ has triumphed over all of our enemies for us. Jesus will build his church, dear friends. He will care for his church up until the very end of time. It's his promise. And another promise is the gates of hell will not overpower. And then Jesus goes on to say to Peter, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you would loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Here, Jesus entrusts to his church the binding and loosing keys, if you will. This is the office of the keys. This is the authority to forgive and retain sins. For the impenitent, for those who are not sorry for their sins, their sins are retained and not forgiven. They are bound in their unbelief. But for those who are penitent, those who who confess their lost condition apart from Christ Jesus. They're the precious, they hear that precious word of forgiveness preached and applied to them. And there, dear friends, is the balm for troubled consciences. Are you distressed by your sins here this morning? Then there's good news for you. And listen closely. Your sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. He bled and died on the cross for all sins. Yes, for you. And now you are cleansed and pardoned and right with God. God is not angry with you. God loves you. And Christ's crucifixion proves it. And Christ's resurrection confirms it. You will not die, but you will live now and for eternity. And now the last verse of our text. Then he commanded the disciples, Jesus, commanded the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Thanks be to God that this is not the last word, huh? At this point in their journey, Jesus has to tell his disciples not to tell anyone who he really is because they still don't quite get it. Yes, they knew that Jesus was the Christ. They knew that he was the son of the living God. But they didn't fully understand what all this would entail, that it would mean a cross and suffering 
and death, but they would. And shortly after all of this, when Jesus rises from the dead and ascends into heaven and sends them the Holy Spirit, then these very same disciples will start telling everyone that Jesus is the Christ. The good news is going to go forth to every nation. And dear friends, that's why you're here this morning. You've heard the good news of Christ's salvation. You believe it. And you rejoice to answer that question, who is this man? In fact, you love to shout it. You love to sing it. You love to tell everyone that you know this. This Jesus, he is the Christ, the son of the living God, and I have life in his name. This Jesus is my savior and he's your savior too. This Jesus died and rose again and he lives forever for me and for you. And because he lives, I will live too forever. How about you? In Jesus' victorious and redeeming name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, on that day when Jesus asked his disciples, but you, who do you say that I am? Peter gave the correct answer. He confessed it. And Lord, he didn't do it under Peter's power, but rather he did it under the confession, the power that you gave him to make that confession. And Heavenly Father, you've done the same thing for all of us. Through the Holy Spirit, you have brought us to faith in Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we, among all the people, over 7 billion people on this earth, are able to answer that question, who is this man? Who is this Jesus? We know exactly who he is. And we're more than happy to confess it and to proclaim it. And Father, I pray that you will empower us with your Holy Spirit that we can do just that. So that on that final day when we're standing in heaven, there will be millions and billions of people standing around us also confessing the same thing that you are the Christ. The Lamb of God is the living Son of God. May we proclaim that today, tomorrow, and throughout all eternity. For the sake of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you now to stand together. We're going to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And again, here's the same opportunity to confess just as Peter did. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. You're in for a treat. Um, today, Elliot and Anita Werner are going to share with us a duet more precious than silver. Again, we normally take up our offering at this sign if you brought one. We thank you very much for that. You, If you haven't placed it into an offering plate, you can do so as you exit out the doors today. It'll be on your left-hand side.
be with those whose health is impaired because of smoke and poor air quality. Keep them safe in your care. Lord, grant patience to those whose lives are greatly inconvenienced because of closed roads and lengthy detours. We pray that you be with your people in the midst of a worldwide pandemic and grant courage to us in these days of hardship. Restore your creation in harmony with your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are in the path of the two tropical storms. And right now they are making their way through the Caribbean. And Lord, it appears they're going to hit the coast, Gulf Coast of the United States. Be with those, Lord, who are in its path. And we pray, if possible, it won't turn from the tropical storm into hurricanes. But rather, those who endure it can survive with little harm or damage. Heavenly Father, we pray for the family of Arthur Manus. And we ask you, Lord, to please be with them at the loss recently of Arthur through COVID-19. As their hearts are broken, Lord, and they mourn the loss of their loved one, a husband and a father, we pray your richest blessings upon this family that they might be comforted, that they might endure these days. And Lord, we also pray for all those who've lost loved ones through COVID, or Lord, those who've lost lives in the wildfires, and maybe even some who've lost it during these tropical storms. Be with your people, Lord, everywhere, and support them and strengthen them. We pray for those who are celebrating the gift of life this week for Lauren Hanneman and for Gisela Lycone. We ask your blessings, Lord, upon their births, their days, and ask you to watch over them. May they rejoice and give thanks to you always for the abundant blessings which you have given to them. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray this day, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us all how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, thank you so much for being here today. God be with you all. Bless you with a most wonderful day and a most wonderful week as well. As I always say, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay in God's word. That's where our strength lies. Receive now his blessing. May our Lord who shows and reveals himself as the God of comfort bless you and keep you. May the Lord who has sought us out and adopted us as his redeemed children make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord who has promised my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will never be abolished look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing.
friends, God be with you all. Have a wonderful day. Please remain seated. You will be ushered out, starting from the back and working way forward. If you'd like to visit, we invite you to do so out on the front lawn. Be, make sure that you keep your mask on and your social distance. God be with you all. Go in peace as you love and serve the Lord through your neighbor. Thanks be to God.